Earth. We are going to tie a Mickey Finn streamer. Mickey Finn, we just put it out here and shout it to everyone. This is um, a fly, I guess, that uh, a very popular fly, uh, different variations in that. Mm -hmm. how, how did it originally come into being? It was uh, originated, uh, originally tied by uh, John Eldon Knight. Uh, he's a gentleman from the Solunar Tables fame. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was ri originally done as a bait fish imitation for trout. But since then has been uh, effective on a lot of different species of trout or, or, uh, and salmon and saltwater fish. It's a really good pattern. Now this is uh, tied on a streamer hook, but I've seen this as well uh, tied on smaller hooks and, and different uh different variations. Uh, is this the best, you've, in your opinion, the best presentation of it? I've, I find this particular dressing really good for Atlantic salmon mm -hmm. and uh, big trout. Uh, what I've done there is I've put molar on the body, molar tubing, and I've used uh, red crystal flash in the wing uh, where it called for uh, red bucktail in the center, but uh, this is an excellent fly early in the year mm -hmm. and for salmon and in the high water and late in the year. Great, yeah. all righty. Well, for you to tie our Mickey Finn for today, here is the list of materials that you will require. The hook is a number two streamer. The thread is 6-0 monocord red, 3-0 monocord white or black. The body is silver mylar tubey tied off at the rear with red thread. The wing is two bunches of dyed yellow bucktail or manga tail with red crystal flash in center. And the head is black cement with two yellow dots and two black dots simulating eyes. And this is two flies in a row now where you've had that uh, eye simulation. Yes. Going. It's very nice. It's, uh, I, you know, I guess it could be argued whether it makes that much of a difference, but it certainly looks... It, it does look very difference. nice on the fly oh, as well. It does make a difference. Like the fish key into certain things, you know, on, like on the head of the uh, orange, uh, Hummer orange. Uh, that uh, bit of uh, fluorescent Chanel. They key into that. I've had fish swallow that right down. Yeah. And yeah. eyes, anything that'll uh, just add a little bit uh, more realism to a fly, it, it, it makes a difference. Now, when you fish something like this, um, is it the same principle, say, now the muddler minnow is a, a fly that I enjoy using when I'm trouting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're, you're sort of jerking it along underneath the yeah. water to simulate a wounded little minnow or a little fish or something like that. Is that the same principle with uh, the Mickey Finn as well? For salmon, I usually fish it on a quartering, a quartering down or, uh, well, straight across drift, but I don't twitch it. But mm -hmm. for trout, I'll, I'll use a twitch technique. Yeah. Well, great. Yeah. Well, without further ado, let's get into it. Okay. What do we need? We've got our fly in the vise, and the first material we're going to tie in it is our 6-0 monocord red thread. And uh, what we'll do is we'll tie it just, just forward of the point. We'll start it there. And I'm just going to take a little twist of it there. And we'll go back to halfway from the point to the barb. And I'll clip off the excess material there and make a couple more turns. And then I'll work up to where we started again. And back once more. And then we'll whip this off. And nice close wraps. We don't have to lay an underbody. Oh, here, I, my, my thread just slipped there. But I got enough of an end there just to haul it down, I think. A good point for our viewers. Yeah. Just enough to grab a hold of with your tweezers there where it snapped off to pull it through. Not, not lucky enough. No. Not lucky enough. So what I'll do, I'll just rewrap that over again and just catch that thread. What happened there is where it's such a fine thread, mm -hmm. and I drew up fairly quickly on it. It created a lot, a lot of heat, and it just broke off, right? Okay. The main thing is that we just want to get a bed down there for the thread, or for the, to, to tie off the uh, molar tubing. There we are. We can snap that out, or we can cut it out. Doesn't matter. Now what we do here is we lacquer that portion of thread we just laid on. Okay. Now for our viewers at home and for myself too, this is a, a new device for hooks and hackles that uh, <laughs> I've never seen you use before. <laughs> this is some kind of a... Oh, I've had it for a year or two and I've just been too lazy to thin up the cement and clean up the tube. <laughs> oh, I see. So it, it's just a, a, um, a device for your head cement. Sure. Cool. And it just lays your cement right where you want it. Okay. And you don't have to worry about um, always uh, taking off the cap and then screwing the yeah, cap back on. That's right. That's right. 
and it doesn't allow the fumes to get out. Well, uh, that's to your detriment, I, I guess. I tell you, I'm disappointed now. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to enjoy that a bit. <laughs> I believe. Okay, now, what we'll do is we'll measure our tubing, and we want a bit of extension of the tubing past the, the red thread base, and we get to just find an area where we'll tie up the tubing up a bit front. We don't want it to go right to the eye, but we want to be fairly well extended up so that uh, we're going to be able to wrap off that uh, tubing. And we'll have our body line it off. Okay, what we do now is there's a core in this tubing, we have to take that out. And sometimes that's not so easy. That core is always there? Yes. There we go, here we go. The purpose of the core, is that just to help the tubing keep its shape? Yes. Like if it were packaged without the, uh, without the core, it would unravel. And as you can see, it's starting to unravel now, you know, as you slip it over. But that is, that's not a big uh, concern because behind the red uh, base, we're going to tie off this right on top of the red base, but it's going to allow that tubing to flare. And that adds to the fish ability, fish catching ability of that fly off line. Now again. Now if that area underneath is never going to be seen, why the red thread? Is it just because that's the thread you happen to be using for this fly? It doesn't really matter uh, the color? Or? No, the underbody, it doesn't matter what color underbody you got. But uh, again, the, the reason for that little portion of underbody is that we have a base to secure our monitor tubing. Okay, as you try to secure it to the hook itself, it, yes. would, it could still slide. Oh, it will slide. It's very, the hook shank is very slippery. Now, I don't like to use, uh, to have this portion too wide. I like to use it as, as a butt. And in, in all butts, we sort of keep it to a fairly slim, uh, mm -hmm. slim area, or a small area, let's say. Now, all you do there is, again, we whip it off at five or six turns. And we slot up our thread. Now let's, let's tie it up. Now we can rotate that on. I like to have my tubing going up and down instead of, of across, horizontally. Okay. The, the pattern of the tubing. Yes. Yeah. Now, that portion of the body is done. Now what I usually do is I'm usually doing about five or six, five or six flies or a dozen flies at a time. What I'll do is I'll do a bunch of bodies and I'll cement this, this portion here probably two or three times and I'll wait between coats about a half an hour. Okay, the next material we, we tie in is our 6 ohm mono cord. Do you usually do that with most of your flies? Uh, Sit down and tie eight yeah. or nine of, of the same pattern at one time and stop in between different stages? I try to, but uh, when you get a, an order which for various flies that you, you don't normally tie or whatever, mm -hmm. you're sort of stuck with a bunch of materials on your, on your desk all the time. But it's, it's much simpler to do five or six flies or a dozen flies at a time. Okay, now I started at the eye with my thread and came back to about, oh, that's probably a quarter or a fifth of the body that I already have, or a shank, let's say, and uh, this is going to be my headspace for my fly. Now, <clears throat> the next material we're going to tie in is bucktail. And this is a beautiful bucktail. I bore it off a friend. <laughs> he was so glad to donate it to me. <laughs> If he said, I'd, I'd give his name on the air, Clarence Ware. Yeah. Well, King of the Humber. Yes, sir. Now, what, what right. with... Anybody not from the West Coast who... Doesn't know him, doesn't yes. Know that. That's Clarence's reputation. He's well known in the angling community of the West Coast here as the King of the Humber. Is he ever? Does he hold actual records, or is he just consistently always getting the he's, large he's fish? He's always getting the large fish. Yeah. In what pound range? Oh, well up in the 30s. Okay, now bucktail is hard to stack. Now I can clip this off here in the butts and put it in our hair stacker as, as we do normally, but uh, it doesn't like to stack well mm -hmm. because it's, it's a little crinkly. So what I try to do is I try to even that hair up with my hands as much as possible. Instead of stacking or Instead before of, you stacking? Before I stack. Okay. Or it, it doesn't matter. You don't need, actually, you don't need a hair stacker with, uh, with bucktail. You don't like to have too blunt a, a wing end on it. Mm -hmm. So how is your allergy with this? Uh, it's the same with the uh, deer hair. I'll be itching shortly. Don't right. oh, come looking for any scratching from me. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that, sir. No. <laughs> the 
Yeah, it takes a little bit of a finger manipulation to get that even or fairly even, but you don't. Again, it doesn't. You don't want it too uh, too blunt. Any uh, any other type of hair can be substituted instead of bucktail. Uh, manga tail. Uh, let's see. Moose is not appropriate. No, uh, it doesn't dye up. Uh, calf tail. I've seen it done with calf tail. Mm -hmm. Now the proportions of, of, of the wing of this fly, it's say uh, a bunch of of uh, yellow bucktail on the bottom and your crystal flash in the center, and the top portion of your wing should be two thir or say double the size of the, the first yellow, uh, yellow bunch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down a fairly slim bunch of, uh, of uh, bucktail for the lower portion. Okay, what I'll do there is I measure my head space again. It's coming back. Now with bucktails you, you, and streamers, usually you come past the hook bend for trout, but for salmon, you usually come to the hook bend or inside. But, uh, well, and why is that? If for trout you want to try and disguise Well, trout don't short take as much as salmon, right? Okay. Okay, we're going to go, I guess, past the bend today. We'll, we'll do it as I would do for a trout, just a wee bit past the bend. There we are. And I measure my head space. And I clip off my hair on an angle, as I normally do. And watch how this is so simple. Look, you just dab this uh, lacquer right in on the butts. Well, the worst thing with me is my eyesight is not that good. I find it hard getting in the hole that time. Okay. I don't come quite forward uh, to, the, uh, to the hook eye, so I'll take that in thirds. One, two, and three. And just make a couple extra reps. And I'm not too worried about that kicking up right now because when I fill in my head, that'll all lay back down. And you're going to want your head to be very... Come back on a, a nice taper. Taper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now this one here, red, red should be fairly prominent. So I've got about oh six strands, and I'm going to double it. So what I do here, well, I better take take a few more longer ones because it's going to be hard to to get them all out and even. The crystal flash. Does that? Uh, I guess it would obviously work better on a bright day where it can really pick up yeah. the, the sun and really. It's a nice material. Is this not such a great fly then to use in, in overcast or mm -hmm. at the, in twilight time? No, it doesn't matter. Actually, streamers are more effective in the early morning and, and uh, evening uh, because the fish or the bigger fish are out lurking around and uh, they're looking for a mouthful and streamers are, are a mouthful compared to other flies. Okay, we got it measured off. Pretty even with the other materials. Mm -hmm. And I'll wrap it in with a couple of turns and then I'll work forward. And then I'll double it back. And you like to keep this fairly well on top of the uh, hook shank. You don't want this splaying out to the sides and whatever. Okay. Okay, there we are. I'll take the long strands here and sort of even it out with the other materials. There it goes, leaning beautifully. So you've got a third of the yellow bucktail. Mm -hmm. Then you put in the crystal flash. Then you can put two thirds on top of the crystal flash. Yes, that's flash. right. You should have a double bunch. Double, double the amount of the first bunch you put in, and I've got it right here, perfect. Okay. What, what are the, the flowing qualities of bucktail like compared to other types of hair? Uh, actually, uh, the bucktail is, is a fairly good floater. It's not as good as calf tail for, say, let's say, wolves and whatever, but it makes a more svelte fly. It's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's a, it makes a better finished looking fly, you know? But uh, the floatability of it is, again, not as good. But it, uh, it has its applications. Now, where you um, put the head cement on the first third, is that also to help seal off the end of the bucktail? Uh, no, or is that, no. That's not important? No, no. OK, here's our second bunch. And again, it's about double the, uh, the width of the, the other. And again, I have to measure. I'm going to lick that down a little bit. It's about uh, double the other bunch, so that should come out just a little bit further than the crystal flash. And I'll cut my tips off on a taper again. And cement the butts. And put the tip back in there. There we go. I'm trying to put a thread through the eye of a needle with that. Yes, sir. Okay. Now it's important again to try to keep your hair right up on top. And the rule of 
thirds again. Yes. Now it looks like it's in a bad mess here, but it's not because I'm going to wrap back on that now shortly. Okay. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just trim some stray fibers here. Good. Now I'll work right down to the hook eye. And it's important on streamer hooks that you close that, that eye off. You can lose some nice fish by not closing that eye. There's no return loop on these downturned eyes. Okay. So how would you lose a fish if it's not... Well, your leader, your leader gets in around and it chafes, it starts moving around the loop where it's tied off, and it'll chafe, chafe off on the, the old sharp end there, you oh, know? Oh, I see, okay. Okay, now, when we get back to the back of the head, as you can see, I haven't wrapped quite back to where I'm going to finish off. It's important that you uh, sort of, not as snug now, you've snug, you've had wrapped down in nice tight turns and very uh, good, good pressure, but when you get back here, if you start uh, putting a lot of pressure on it and it'll just flare up on you. See how that lays back there now? Look at so all that. You just uh, say loose wraps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we'll just work forward a few turns because I'm going to whip finish and again if, if I do uh, put a lot of pressure on those wraps here again it'll mm -hmm. kick up. So it'll kick it up. Yep. So you want to do your whip finish more up towards the... Uh... Did I say the front two-thirds of the head? Okay. Now I'm laying those, those wraps on. Again, I'm working fairly fast, but those wraps are going side by side. There are no overlaps. No, and moving again towards the head as you go. Towards the head. Now, I'll draw that up slowly. And all we have to do actually right now is to put some clear, uh, clear head cement. Mm -hmm. It's probably two or three coats of clear, or probably two coats of clear, and a coat of black head cement around. Mm -hmm. Now again, they have to be done, well, you know, after each each coat dries, and then what I do is I put some yellow, yellow cement on each side. I'll just look so for our viewers. Yeah. I'll bring this one in yeah. just to show you. Yellow cement on the sides, and then when that dries, just put a little black dot in for a pupil or a pupil. Yeah. Mm. There you can see what it would look like in the finished product. You can't finish it now, because of course you'd have to wait for all the different. Uh, Swim, 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 swim. 